Welcome back to Crossroads. I'm Michelle McCory. And I'm David Schuster. The White House is now pushing Congress to act on a revised GOP-backed health care bill. But Republicans on Capitol Hill say the votes still are not there in the House for passage, and tensions between the White House and both parties are not getting any better, even in the wake of a government funding bill that just went through. Janae Norman has the story. Democrats didn't win. President Trump did by out-negotiating them. That's the message from Budget Director Mick Mulvaney about the bipartisan spending bill to keep the government funded through September. They were desperate to make this administration look like we couldn't function, like we couldn't govern. And we know that a large part of their base, especially their left-wing base, wanted a shutdown and certainly didn't want them to cut a deal with us. The more than trillion dollar spending measure doesn't include cuts to Planned Parenthood or sanctuary cities, nor does it include funding for the president's proposed border wall or the president's proposed cuts to agencies like the EPA. Still, Mulvaney insists Trump won. The president delivered on his promises and got his priorities funded. They want you to think they won. What they don't want you to know is the American people won here because the president simply outnegotiated them. We felt that it was a bipartisan negotiation. As I said, the leaders, Democrat and Republican, House and Senate work well together, and why ruin that? And the fixation on scoring a Trump victory isn't over. How's health care coming, folks? How's it doing? All right, we're moving along. The president hasn't gotten any major legislative win, but hopes to change that this week with a vote on the GOP's amended plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. We're excited about this policy. Uh, we're making very good progress with our members, and our president has been instrumental in that. And that was Janae Norman reporting there. Let's now bring in Billy Wynn, managing partner of TRP Health Policy, to talk more about the revised American Health Care Act, and Tom Borelli, contributor for the Conservative Review. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. And, and Tom, I'm going to start with you, because in an attempt to appeal to conservatives, this bill is trying to give more power to the states. Is that going to help garner Republican support? It should. The Freedom Caucus is behind this bill. And let's remember, the Republicans do, do some, uh, deserve some criticism here, because they advertised that they were going to repeal fully Obamacare and replace it with the free market system. What we're talking about now is better than the last plan, but it's not a full repeal. In some ways, it's false advertising. And if it was a product, some of them would be recalled. But, you know, we need to keep the pressure on them to keep those free market, because at the end of the day, the success of this bill is going to depend whether or not premium costs go down. That's going to be the measurement. The first Republican bill, it was going to go up 15 to 20 percent. We can't have that. I'm not sure with th that I agree with your assessment that it's getting better, given that Fred Upton, a uh, influential right. Republican congressman, just came out and said right. that he's now going to oppose the latest version. Right. But uh, Bill Wynn, what's your view of the squabbles that the Republicans are having over health care? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the problem with these new changes to the bill, is that they actually jeopardize people with pre-existing conditions and other uh, vulnerable patients, and they allow states to put caps on essential health benefits, things like maternity care, pediatrics, and other important services that may appeal to some on the far right, but certainly don't help the cause uh, getting votes in the middle. And one thing you have to love about the left, they love mandates. Thou shall cover one size fits all, and if you don't like it, the IRS is going to fine you. That's not America. That's not what free choice is about. That's why some of this coverage should go to the states and let the states decide. Really? Because we require everybody with a driver's license to have auto insurance. Why not require every insurance right. company to cover pre-existing conditions in the states? Well, with, with good point. With, with uh, auto insurance, you can buy it across state lines. If I have a Porsche, I'm going to pay a lot more than if my wife has a little car. I mean, that's what we need. We need differential still, pricing. But you still have to have insurance. But not, to, not everybody pays the same insurance. We should have insurance, but it should be. It's not in the Constitution. <laughs> but you still have to have insurance. Right, well, you do, because like that's a license. Well, Steve, uh, let's... That's a state issue. You Steve, get the license from the well, state. Let's, right, go with, well, let's go with Tom's metaphor. And, and one could make the argument uh, that if you look at car insurance, for example, people with a, a bad driving record or that have already been in an accident do have to pay more. Now, it may be unfortunate, but... Michelle, but Michelle, they still have to take a driver's agreed. test in order to get insurance. So the, the point is, if, you're gonna, if the government is going to require people to take certain actions, what's wrong? And, Bill, I'll address this to you. Is there something wrong with the government requiring that insurance companies cover people with pre-existing conditions? Is that terrible? But shouldn't they pay more, like health insurance, like car insurance? Well, That's yeah, the correct. point we're trying to make. I agree with Michelle. To answer your question, <laughs> David, uh, I, don't, I don't, certainly don't think it's terrible. I mean, we can have a philosophical discussion about the role of government, but the fact is that right now there are people in our country, millions of them, 
who have cancer, who have survived cancer. There are women who may become pregnant or are pregnant. All of those people are subject to risk because of this new Republican health care bill. And we can, again, we can, we can debate, kind of mandate this, mandate that. We can draw analogies here and there. But those people are worse off if this bill passes. Well, you know, President Trump and others have promised to protect them, and they're going back on that promise. Tom, there, there, the there, there are actually millions of Americans that are actually suffering under Obamacare because it was sold on a pack but, of lies. Keep point, your plan. To keep Michelle's your doctor. Point, to Michelle's yes. point, it, is the bottom line that you believe that somebody who has a pre-existing condition, whatever it is, they're born with a no, heart defect, no. they've got cancer, that they, risk, well, let me finish, let me finish, sure. that they, have, they should be paying more for their insurance out of no fault, out of their own, but because they have a pre-existing condition. That's is that why, your argument? That's why you have risk pools. That The Republican plan has risk, pool, risk pools, excuse me, where federal money would help subsidize those. Well. Obamacare is in but, a death spiral because young, healthy but, people but don't want to pay for people. That's not the point. The Republican the plan, the Republican the plan would tell states, you do not have to cover pre-existing conditions. You don't, you don't have to have insurance that covers pre-existing conditions. And the fundamental and if a question... Governor, and if a governor wants to get re-elected, they would make sure they have a risk pool so their constituents would have health care. The problem that's with Obamacare. That's not the Republican plan. That's How do you not, know? That, because I've seen the Republican plan. The reason that Fred Upton got out of this Fred plan. Upton, Fred Upton's been there 30 years. He has a, a score of, he votes Republican 30% of, of the he's time. He's one of the most influential Republicans on Capitol Hill. But well, that's you, unfortunate. Let's, he's, he's, let's give Bill a chance former, to get in here. He's the former chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee that wrote most of the, the American Health Care Act, and he knows what he's talking about. And that's he's why we're suffering with it. He may not be on the extreme right, but he's on the right. No one doubts that. And he's concerned about the bill because it allows insurers to raise rates without any limit on people who have pre-existing conditions. And that is something that he's not willing to subject his constituents to. And I think, the, you know, not enough Republicans and, are going to go along with a plan like that. And you explain to the audience why Obamacare is in a death spiral. It, it, look at the S&P and look at all the independent no, analysis. No, that, that wasn't the, that wasn't the question, sir. With, with all due respect, with all due respect. Well, this is how we're, we're one at a time. Let, let, let Mr. Wynn finish his question, and then, Tom, you could respond. Bill, go, go ahead. And the S&P came out with analysis last week that said Obamacare rates will rise by, by single digits next year, absent the complete disruption caused by the mm -hmm. president and members of Congress <laughs> who are not giving any assurance to insurers who have to file their premiums by June for the 2018 market. But then, so Obamacare is not in a death spiral. There are 24 million people who have coverage now who that, wouldn't that, have sir, a Republican repeal bill. Sir, Those that is incorrect. Facts. It isn't a death spiral. Like, That's why millions, billions of dollars have been lost by the insurance industry. That's why they're exiting the, the marketplace in states, some states why and some counties. Why do they oppose this Republican bill? Why do you think they oppose the bill? Why does every stakeholder across the country oppose this bill? Because it doesn't do anything to help them. It deprives coverage from 24 million Americans. It raises costs for people everyone. People do have coverage, but they can't afford it. Pre -existing conditions. Come on, sir, you know the deal. People can't afford it. Their premiums in Arizona are going up over 100 percent. The deductibles, the deductibles are way up. How could it be worse? This bill raises deductibles. It takes away subsidies for cost sharing, which 80 percent of it's the people It's not even passed yet. How do you know what's going to happen? I want to ask you both Boston about. Uh, I want to ask you both about something we heard in that uh, that setup piece, and that is there was Mike Mulvaney, the budget director, claiming that this budget that passed was a victory for Republicans and a defeat for Democrats. Uh, bill, do you agree? Well, I, I, look, I mean, they're going to say whatever they want to say. The thing that concerns me that he said today is that. President Trump might not fund the cost-sharing subsidies for May after having just promised to do that in order to strike a deal with Democrats to pass that government funding bill. So it shows you what kind of dealmaker he might be. And those kinds of comments are only going to make premiums go up when insurers have to file for 2018. Premiums are already up. Tom, a victory for Republicans, even though the president uh, got no money for the border no. wall. Absolutely Sanctuary not. cities still get money. Planned Parenthood still gets money. Absolutely not. Republicans should not vote for that plan. In right. my personal opinion, it was a disaster. All right. Honesty from Tom Borelli. We <laughs> got the you time. there. <laughs> Tom Borelli, thanks as always. A spirited debate. Bill Wynn, we appreciate you as well. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Coming up on the show, ridding the world of landmines. Humanitarian groups are working to clear the explosives from several countries. We'll speak to an expert from the United Nations about some of those deadly devices and what is being done to try and remove them. You're watching Crossroads and I-24 News.